Good afternoon, Pastor David. Yes, it is, John. I just want to make sure this is recording. Is it working? <laughs> Good. Uh, want to welcome everybody to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. And you know, today, Pastor, as it's Tuesday, we try to stay current. We try to stay updated on current events. Yep. So for those who are tuning in today, uh, you'll hear uh, this unfiltered mostly towards the current events. And then on Thursdays when we get together and, uh, and chit-chat, it's uh, biblical-based and, and church uh, more centered on the church. Today, Pastor, you know, I've been hearing across the news that, uh, that our administration is pushing the vaccine card and identification in almost everything. I mean, to go to the gym, you need an ID. To uh, ID or a vaccine card. Uh, all these restaurants, a number of different things where they're mandator mandatory, showing you their vaccine card and an identification. And now it seems like our administration is really laxed about voting, that you don't need an ID. And that our, the president came out and was even uh, comparing some of the Republicans to Bull Connor and and actually, he was he was actually comparing Democrats. Democrats, that's right. He, 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 it's kind of combining the two. Yes, he was. Yeah, that's right. But we see this kind of this double standard. You know, uh, we see our administration pushing for the vaccine and the and and the mandate and all that. And when it comes to voting, and there just seems to be a double standard. I want to get your feedback on this. Yeah, yeah, this will be a short answer because I'm obviously not a political pundit by any means. Um, but yeah, I find it kind of odd. I find it odd because in the midst of uh, the summer of riots that we had not that long ago, there were quite a number of cities that were under attack, right? And and so much violence that took place and all. And, and yet we have, we have vice president as well as president and others who are saying that what they're calling the insurrection, ex insurrection on January 6th, they, they put it in the same category. So right from the beginning, the attempt to, to apparently not deal with the reality of what this nation is going through and then to kind of um, pivot to take our attention away from those kinds of things and then to put our attention on issues related to the suppression, quote unquote, of voters' rights and and this uh, specter of racism, um, I believe is being used to take our attention or the attention of, of the uh, average American away from the situation we find ourselves in as a nation with the southern border and and the fentanyl that's coming in and the trafficking of children and and all of those things it seems to me pretty obvious that our attention is being diverted from the incredible inflation that is taking place even now and and the uh, dissatisfaction of the average voter concerning the way the government is handling the covid crisis and and the things that relate to that. And so I've, I find it interesting that we have seen uh, a pivoting from the issues that people actually do care about and then intention being given to things like a supposed suppression of voter rights. Uh, we were talking just a little while ago about this particular uh, restaurant that, that will um, um, deliver tacos. You know, we happen to like tacos, right? And so... Uh, so I looked up this particular establishment that sells tacos, and I thought, well, maybe they can, maybe they can uh, deliver a few to us. Why, why not, right? <laughs> right. And, and so I looked at the page, and the page said that they will not send us any tacos if we don't have a, uh, a major credit card and a photo identification. Uh, so I have to have a major credit card and a photo ID to get tacos <laughs> from this taco place. But I don't need anything like that to go and cast a vote. I don't even have, in some places, I don't even have to be a citizen of the United States to find my vote being counted. And see, so yeah, there's a, um, there is a, uh, a major problem, I would say, John, related to 
uh, the direction this this um, this nation is going and the obvious fact that I do not believe for a single moment that there is a suppression of voters rights mm. I don't believe that and I don't think the average person does either I think what we have is a smoke screen I believe what we have is a boogeyman that has been set up and that boogeyman has orange hair <laughs> and that's the way it's working see the the Companies like CNN and others are losing up to 90% of viewership because they don't have a boogeyman to, to keep people afraid of. And up to 90% of viewership is, is lost on CNN right now. That They're not letting you know that, but the craziness of the things that they say requires to have uh, some straw man that they can attack constantly and seeing that that Trump hasn't been in office for a year, they don't have anything to rattle against anymore, so they make things up or they blame or whatever. It's what they're doing. And uh, and so now the, the boogeyman, and it's been that way for a while now, is racism. And so how do you solve racism? Is racism going to be solved by by legislation, by passing laws that say you cannot dislike people? I, I believe what we have is selective racism. I also believe what we're seeing is a uh, diminishing of what actually does constitute true racism and a utilization of a word that is actually emptying it of its content by, by whitewashing so many people um, as being a white supremacists or whatever. And that's what's really taking place. And I think the average American knows that. You know, I, I'm a Mexican-American. Just because I'm light-skinned doesn't mean that, that that isn't my heritage. That's who I am. You know, and, and I have my own cultural biases. I have my own cultural things that I like and things that I don't like. We all have a right to that. And when they're sinful, I have to turn those things over to the Lord so I can be the man he wants me to be. But we all have our preferences. We have... We all have our cultural things that we like. I mean, just now we're talking about tacos. <laughs> Not that people watching who aren't Mexican don't like them. I think everybody in California, in one way or another, must like a taco. I mean, they, they must. <laughs> but what we do is we create a fiction. We create something to, to, to say, this is bad, this is bad, and these people are all bad because they believe this, and that's what's taking place right now. So when it comes to voting, I'll just close with the thought. When it comes to voting... I am 100% behind showing ID. I believe that whether you're black or brown or white, yellow, red, whatever you want to be, we all have forms of ID. You can't get on a plane without an ID. You can't go from the United States to a foreign country without a passport or a form of ID. And to say that if one particular group of people are incapable of having an ID is racist. It's racist. And, and yet people, for some reason, don't understand that. And we just celebrated uh, the uh, memorial of, of Martin Luther King Jr., who, a man I admired tremendously, you know, a man who, that when I think of the sacrifice this man made, um, I, I actually tear up because I think that he, he was a very courageous man who did what he did in the name of the Lord as he was seeking uh, for the little black children, the little white uh, children to be able to actually be united in a nation that had had, had matured past uh, hatred. So uh, I'm I'm again I'm I'm an, a Mexican and and I a Mexican American. I I don't I don't run around saying the things I've experienced, but I have. I've experienced it as every minority in one form or another has endured. You know the 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 things that have been said, the attitudes that have been expressed towards me because of my culture. But you know what? Um, the answer to that isn't going to be me getting angry. Um, the answer to that is is changed hearts. And that's why I, I, that's why I preach a gospel of transformation so that we can be one in Jesus Christ. And so yes, I believe that we need to be sensitive to the, the fact that racism is being used right now as a, a straw man to take our attention off of the failures of the administration, this present administration. There has never been an administration that doesn't have failures. But this particular administration uh, 
has really shown itself for what it is. And so we need to pray for our nation. We need to be aware of what's going on. But we also need to realize that we have the power of the vote. Yes. And we should utilize it. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for uh, sharing this. It's, you know, it's it's obvious. And and um, it's like the Dracula or that costume that, that you, yeah. do, you, tell, you tell the church about. You come one time and once some more candy comes again. But now they're just, uh, it's, it's just everything so revealed. Now. It's open. It's open, yes. And so, well, church family, thank you for tuning in. Pastor, thank you for taking the time. And uh, with Unfiltered, we do want to invite you, our church family, to our Wednesday evening services, uh, which is tomorrow. Pastor's taking us through the book of Ephesians. Yep. And we'll also be celebrating communion. Yes. It'll be our, I don't want to say first communion. It'll be the first <laughs> communion of the year. Yes. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. And then we have our Sunday morning services at 830 and 1045. And men, we have our Super Bowl breakfast coming up. That's going to be February 5th at 830. You can purchase tickets online, or you can actually go to the gazebo. We'd love to see you there. Pastor, thank you again for your time. And church family, God bless you, and we'll see you soon.